guys, happy December 1st. Today's video is a monthly favorites and fails. Everything that I have been loving and a few things that simply did not work out for me in the month of November. You guys really seem to enjoy these videos and I have a playlist of them. So if you wanna check out prior months, by all means, uh, binge on. Anyways, I've got skincare, lifestyle, food and beverage. So speaking of beverage, grab a hot one and pony up. I don't know what's going on in my head these days. I really don't. All right, first up, I've been using and adoring the new Neutrogena Hydro Boost Overnight Hydration Cream. This is a really nice body moisturizer. It's not sticky, it's fast absorbing, and it really does keep your skin nice and hydrated. It softens dry, rough patches. This product is part of the Neutrogena Hydro Boost uh, skincare line, and it differs from their body lotion, which I've always raved about in the past, and that this is a much thicker formulation. Uh, so it really helps with dry winter skin, in particular, in terms of its ability to reduce water loss out of the skin. And additionally, this product is unique in that it's got uh, poly uh, polyhydroxy acids in it. It has uh, zinc gluconate and copper gluconate. I have videos explaining how wonderful these are, but they basically add hydration to the skin and they softly, uh, they soft, they softly, softly, they gently exfoliate dry, dead, built up crusty stuff to allow your moisture barrier to kind of function better and to facilitate uh, skin cell turnover in a very gentle, non-irritating fashion. I've really been enjoying this. The first few times I used it, I was like, you know, it took me a while to really appreciate it. I would say a few weeks, but I feel as though my skin is a lot softer using this product. It's a really good moisturizer for everyday use. And you guys, I have tried this on my face multiple times and it works out really well. It doesn't burn or sting. I've used it around my eyes as an eye cream. I've used it on my neck as a neck cream. I mean, seriously, before you go out and buy four or five different jars of creams for different body sites, just try your body moisturizer on those places. Chances are it's just fine. And for me, this worked out really well. Now that being said, uh, some body moisturizers, because they tend to be heavier and thicker, some people don't enjoy that on their face. I find it's too occlusive. For people with really sensitive rosacea prone skin, actually that can sometimes precipitate a flare. It kind of depends on the nature of your rosacea. So that was a win. And another win for me was, I, sh I bought this a while ago and shared it with you guys in a Walgreens video. It's a hand soap, how to wash. First of all, I adore the label. It goes step by step on how to actually wash your hands. This is perfect if you have young children to teach them how to properly wash their hands. But let's be honest, like most adults, you know, maybe aren't going through all of these steps. So, you know, Obviously now with everything going on in the world, we're really aware of the importance of washing our hands, but don't forget about those other contagious diseases that we need to be protecting ourselves from too. Things like colds and flus, cold and flu season is upon us. Um, anyway, so yeah, I wanna give a shout out to this hand soap. It's fragrance free. They make fragranced versions if you know that's your jam, but I always encourage people to um, you know, try and reduce fragrance use wherever possible, although it is less risky in wash off forms. And honestly, I frequently use scented hand soaps myself. Anyways, uh, this is super gentle. It's not drying, it's not irritating. It has a very mild surfactant in it. Uh, it has a, a cocomidal propyl betaine, uh, which is, you know, what you'll find in a lot of conditioners actually. And while it's very mild, do be aware that some people can and do develop an allergy to that. So if that's you, you know, you obviously would not want to use this. But otherwise, it's really good and I've been happy with it. It doesn't foam. Um, I think they make this with a pump, which would be preferable because I find that if you have a young child especially, it's really easy to over, over pour, um, to, over, to get too much and then you end up wasting it. All right, speaking of cleansers, this is a product that did not work out for me for reasons that were obvious to me from the get-go before even using it. Um, but overall, I actually think it is a great product, but it did not work out for me. And it is by uh, Kose, 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 I think that's how you say it. This is a Japanese brand I love. They have a fantastic cleansing oil, by the way. Softimo, love it, inexpensive. Anyways, this is their, 
uh, how do you say this? My Hava Harujin Skin Cleansing Cream. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that. Anyways, this product is a fragrance-free cleanser, but it's got ingredients in it that are really good for wicking up and removing excess oil. For me, that's too much and it's drying to my skin. Um, so this product, it's got, let me just tell you the ingredients really quick. It's got kaolin, a clay that can help wake up oiliness. It also has charcoal. Um, charcoal can kind of help with excess oiliness and both charcoal and the kaolin clay can kind of help pull uh, sebum and oil up from out of the pore and just kind of help with that oiliness. Um, and then it's got some very moisturizing ingredients as well. It's got rice bran oil, it's got soy ferment extract, and has natto. It's free of fragrance. It doesn't have any harsh surfactants in it. Um, so, and long story short, it, it was just too drying for me. I don't have that much oiliness going on, but if you're somebody who wakes up in the morning and you look like an oil slick and you like to wash your face at first thing in the morning, try this because I do think it will help with degreasing the skin in a gentle fashion without overstripping, overstripping, <laughs> overstripping. Ooh, wonder what that looks like. Without overstripping your moisture barrier and leading to dryness, try this out. Um, you know, I, I don't have that excess oiliness to sacrifice to a product like this, but a lot of you do, and I highly recommend it in that case. Um, you know, I don't wash my face twice a day because I don't, you know, now that I use, because I've been using topical vitamin A for so long, I currently use tretinoin and use adapalene in the past. Um, because I use that, I don't have, my skin is not as oily and because I'm getting <clears throat> wiser, <laughs> my skin is not as oily. So I don't, I don't benefit from products like this, but I would put this in the category of that Cetaphil clay mask that I also love, but honestly, I personally don't need or derive much of the benefit from because I'm not dealing with oiliness. But this is another one in that kind of category of clay-based products for excessively shiny skin or oily skin. Definitely give this a try. All right, this was a huge fail. Oh, not a huge fail. It was just a disappoint for me. This is the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Asiatica Ampule. Y'all know I am a, I'm on team Centella. Centella is an ingredient that has been shown to be helpful for wound healing. Uh, you know, it's not to help with, with kind of repair and healing. It's good for calming down irritation. I love moisturizers with Centella. For example, the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm, love that product. So I was you know, excited about this because it's basically just Centella in a liquid form. And I was expecting to appreciate some of those benefits of just calming down irritation and you know, redness with this, but honestly, it's like water. <laughs> I could not tell the difference between this and just putting more water on my face. Um, and it was not cheap or, you know, it was not inexpensive. Um, it's really, it's not thick or anything. It's really just like a water consistency. You know, you're supposed to pat it into the skin. I just really, you know, I've used this for a, for a while now. And to me, it's like I'm just patting my face with a little more water. I don't appreciate any kind of soothing effect with this. I was kind of optimistic that this might be a good product for people who shave their face to apply after shaving. Uh, Cause you know, Centella is helpful for calming down irritation and for healing and repair. And after you shave, you've kind of stripped away some of the natural moisture barrier. And so I thought this might be kind of like a helpful padded in after shave type thing. But honestly, I think it's just like water. As of the filming of this video, I think I've been using this for at least six weeks, honestly, and I you know, don't really see much benefit with this. So I'm gonna continue to use it. Um, I actually put some of these things on other body sites when they're, especially when I'm you know, not that motivated to continue using them on my face. I will just go ahead and start applying them like to my legs, my arms, um, and you know, use them up that way to other body sites if they're not irritating or anything. Um, so you know, maybe maybe uh, we'll see a brightening effect and reduction in redness on my body like after showering. But so far, I've just not really been that into them. Uh, now we're gonna get into the saga of the running shoe. And you guys are like, <laughs> by the way, they're always they're now. I you know, I've been trying to do timestamps in my vids, so. 
check out YouTube has this thing where you can see it's called chapters I think you can see what I'm talking about in different sections of the video and skip to that so yeah you know if you're ever watching a video and I'm like you know blabbing about my grocery haul or something and you're not into that check the time cards or whatever and you can skip around so you know it's not so unbearable um, all right Anyways, on to the running saga. Uh, you guys know I run, I pretty much run every day. I shouldn't say that. Some days I do other forms of exercise so that I'm not just running. Um, I try and do strength training, whatever. Anyways, I'm a diehard runner and I love it. It's how I should manage stress. Um, okay, so my entire running career, if you will, uh, I have run loyally in ASICs. Uh, so much, you know, I, these have, ASICs have always been the running shoe that I automatically go to. In the past, they have always served me so well. As a matter of fact, I committed the ultimate running no-no, and I actually ran uh, a marathon in a brand new pair of ASICs that I did not wear before, and it went really well. You know, they always tell you never run a race in a brand new pair of shoes, you'll get a blister. Yeah, I mean, that's how well they were serving me for many years. Over the past year, I've been having problems with my running shoes. Every time I get a new pair of ASICs, first of all, the bottoms of my feet burn for some unexplained reason when I put them on and it's just very uncomfortable. I also am finding that I am more prone to, to blisters and I, you know, I, it, you might argue, well, it's probably because you're always using those exfoliating foot creams. I don't think so because I've always used those and I've never had problems with blisters to this extent. And I even took a break from using those and continued to have new blisters. I mentioned in a vlog a while ago about the ASICs issue. It, I mentioned in a vlog a while ago about the ASICs issue and a lot of you guys were like, yeah, same thing has happened to me. Um, and so, you know, I also went on a sh like either the ASICs website or a shoe website, like, I don't know, maybe Zappos and decided to read reviews. And I was seeing some of the same, you know, people reviewing and commenting some of the same issues, how they had worn ASICs for years and now all of a sudden they were incredibly painful, etc., etc. All right, so I decided to try out New Balance um, and I was a little apprehensive because you know, a long time ago when I was loving ASICs, I tried a different shoe and it, you know, I got like a shin splint transiently and I was like, oh heck no, I ain't got time for that. So I was like, I'll never depart from ASICs again. But I was like, you know, it's time, I need to try something different. So I tried out these New Balance um, 680s. I don't know what they're actually called. I'll link them, all of this stuff down below. Anyways, I tried out New Balance and I've actually really been enjoying these. This was not, uh, too expensive for a running shoe is, you know, it's in kind of moderate, like middle of the road for running shoes. Very supportive, very lightweight. I noticed though with these, there's not as much, uh, arch support as I would have liked. These are not bad, but I I don't know, the cushion, some of the initial cushion and shock absorbency seem to fade pretty quickly. I don't think they are as good for somebody who runs long distances regularly like myself. Um, so, you know, overall they're not bad. I think they're better though as a walking shoe. They are very lightweight. Anyways, you guys recommended to me um, Brooks. I mean, I've heard good things about Brooks for a while and I've never tried Brooks. So, um, a few weeks ago, I got a pair of the Brooks, is it Ghost? Ghost 13. This is it, you guys. This shoe is amazing. I love it. It was not cheap, but you know what? My running hobby, I'm willing to, I'm willing to pay that price point. This was not a cheap shoe, but it's my new shoe, so hopefully they hold up for a while. Um, the Ghost 13s. The arch support in this is like a hug, and the heel is nice and light and cushiony. This is perfect. It also seems like it's a lot more comfortable on my hips and my hip flexors. I never, fortunately I haven't had any running injuries even though I run like a lot. I've been very fortunate. But I have to say one thing I didn't even appreciate until swapping over to these is that I would have some hip flexor stiffness, a little bit of ache after runs, you know, over the past few years. And I just thought it was like, you know, whatever, I've been running for so many years, like, you know, stiffness and things like that. 
wear and tear, whatever. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, obviously it's not an injury or anything. I would never, I would never advocate pushing through an injury. Don't do that. That's very dangerous. But like just some, you know, nuance that like mm, a little bit of transient discomfort in the hip stiffness in the hip flexors. And I just thought it was, you know, age related change. Um, but now I'm, I'm thinking it's the ASICs because that has completely melted away with these Brooks. Uh, running shoes. So thank you guys so much for recommending those. They have been a game changer, like a game changer. All right, that's the running saga book update. I finished uh, Kristen Hanna's Comfort and Joy. This is a little holiday story and it is lovely. It is not, you know, most of the times these Christmas books, you go in expecting some level of cheese and the cheese on this was quite mild. Uh, it's actually a very good little story. It's, it's kind of a story about how, you know, when somebody wrongs us, we really can easily carry a lot of resentment with us that manifests in different ways in our life. And, you know, kind of the process of forgiveness. That's what I took away from the book. Maybe it's not that deep. This is great if you're looking for just like a lighthearted, uh, you know, enjoyable read, a mood boost, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, it's still a good story. I would say the Christmas part of that, of this story is not a heavy, heavy focus. It is a, you know, a theme and I would say a small section of the book, but otherwise it just kind of happens to occur during Christmas. Recently I told you guys in my Netflix love-hate relationship with Netflix, like, I forget about it, I don't consume it for the majority of the year, but I you know, keep giving them my money and, and now they're telling me they're gonna increase the monthly fee by a dollar and I just you know, lie down and take it. Anyways, I watched two movies this month on Netflix that were really good. First one, Hillbilly Elegy. I read Hillbilly Elegy a few years ago and loved it. It is a great story, uh, it's a, um, autobiog autobiographical story of, you know, kind of a pull yourself up by your bootstraps type of thing. And, you know, it's, it's a very good uh, read. But the movie, you know, movies can ruin books. The movie did it justice. Glenn Close, I mean, I don't know why I would have expected anything less from her. She nailed it. And Amy Adams, again, that woman, you know, she always does a good job and she really, she really brought that character exactly to life in the way that it should have been brought to life. Um, and then the main character, the guy, the you know, the, the narrator, the, the guy who's this is his life, he actually looks an awful lot like the actual person. Same thing with like a lot of the characters, they did a really good job choosing actors who looked like the real people. Um, so it, it was very well done. True to the book, enjoyable to watch and highly recommend it. No, you know, they did a good job. Another movie that's been out for a while and I finally watched it that I really enjoyed is The Founder. It's about uh, the founders of McDonald's and it's a really good story. It's a really good movie. Michael Keaton did an amazing, amazing job in it. And it just kind of shows you, you know, small business to franchise that whole like transition and how he, you know, you've got corporate greed in there. And the movie's interesting too, in that it shows you some of the pain points in starting a business. And so I thought that was really interesting. And then, you know, obviously a big part of the movie is business relationships going awry and, you know, the drama there, one person's greed, Etc. It was really good and you know very interesting. All right, now food and beverage. Beverage update. I have been loving my Ode to Tea. Is that what it's called? Ode to Tea gift box that I got myself from Peak Tea. Uh, it's just really fun. If you were in the market for a gift, this would make an amazing gift for the tea lover in your life. It's basically this beautiful gift box that you open up and it plays Ode to Joy and it's very peaceful. It comes with. Um, a ton of teas and I love their teas. I've been a huge fan of their teas for several years now. They're crystals and you just put the crystal in your glass and you can add either hot or cold water to it uh, so you don't have to steep it. 
and the, the cold crystallization method that they use really seems to preserve the flavor and you know supposedly preserves the polyphenol content really well so you really get a bold flavor and a bright flavor profile with their teas. But this box got me to try their Rooibos uh, Vita Vitality Elixir. Now, I was always somebody who thought I did not like Rooibo Rooibos tea. Um, I, I like I've never cared for it. But this is so smooth and it's got a nice vanilla, like a bright vanilla flavor to it. It's delicious. All right, and then the next favorite from the month is this Pyre. Um, sugar-free caramel flavored syrup. I have been a fan of Pyre for some time. It's a company that uses erythritol and stevia to make no sugar sweeteners. I've always loved their maple syrup, especially it's very, their maple syrup's very good for like baking. Um, and then I saw they came out with this caramel and it is delicious. No, it doesn't taste exactly like caramel and it's not a thick consistency like caramel, but it's thicker than like, liquid stevia and it does have a little bit of a thickness to it so it's really good drizzled on things as a topping and it has it has a nice caramely kind of undertone to it it's it's is a close it's as close to a caramel syrup that's vegan friendly you know that I, and, and no sugar that i think i'm gonna get i really like this a lot it's particularly delicious on oatmeal and i like doing oatmeal and then sprinkling powdered peanut butter on the oatmeal and then drizzle this on top. The combination of the caramel and then the peanut butter powder, it's just a, like a very nice topping for oatmeal. So that's everything I've been loving in the month of November and you know, a few skincare things that really just didn't work out for me. Uh, comment below though, what have you guys been enjoying? Have you read any good books? Have you seen any good movies? Share in the comments. December is a time where I find, like I said, I consume a lot more movies. And so share in the comments good movies that you guys have been, you know, maybe seen recently. Um, I would love to hear from you all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for staying to the end if you made it this far. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.